Hello and welcome to the AM News Show. Um, we're here today with our guest, who's Darren Bradford, who um, is recent, recently been appointed as Managing Director of, I need to get this right, RJTK Automotive Group. Um, when I first met you, Darren, which was about a decade or so ago, you were then running um, Drayton Motors Kia, a single site Kia operation. And then over the years, um, you picked up quite a few awards with, with AM for best dealerships to work for and some of the AM awards as well. And obviously now you're in the hot seat of the, of the broader group. And kind of knowing you from back then when um, to win the best dealerships kind of awards – culture and the way that you valued people was was kind of was a core to the way that you're running the the dealership so now now you're running the group you're you're kind of responsible for the group how are you going to kind of ensure that you keep that keep that focus in the the broader business yeah that's the uh, biggest challenge for me uh this year uh because it's always difficult uh, you know some of the staff that started with me back in 2013 uh, which will be 10 years uh, next week, have said, you know, we've grown really quick, uh, but we seem to have kept the family values uh, within the division I, I ran before uh, being appointed uh, at the beginning of this year. It, I suppose it's about me now breeding that culture into my senior uh, operations team uh, and the head of businesses across the group. We, we're very close anyway. We talk regularly. Uh, we're in contact nowadays, thanks to uh, online platforms. You can have meetings at the, the click of a button uh, and deal with any issues almost immediately. That has to be led from the top, from myself, uh, and, uh, and I will be at the forefront of that with regards to communications to the, the whole group. So, for example, what I've announced recently uh, is... Our communications is going to go back to old school magazine through the letterbox and it's going to be seasonal. So three times a year they'll receive the magazine and have news uh, about the whole group uh, in the magazine, competitions, crosswords and word searches and anything else you'd find in that cheesy 90s magazine. Um, but for me, we have a closed group for social media for all our staff and uh, I put several communications out there weekly and the Distinction Awards, as as you're aware, has always run across uh, my division since 2020. Uh, I've just announced across the group that will be rolled out across the whole group this year. So lots of exciting feedback from all different members of staff. Uh, the managers across the group have been great. They've engaged with it. They've pulled the team into the, the meeting rooms on site watch my videos and other communications together with people in the business that wouldn't normally have not the time but the, the uh, facility to, to look at digital communications so technicians validators etc have gone into these rooms so the feedback i'm getting is amazing and it's about uh delivering what a promise uh, for me so it's about you know making sure if i say i'm going to do something I, first of all, can financially afford that, have I budgeted for it, uh, even if uh, a stress test it and turn down the performance of the business by 30%, 40%, can we still afford it? You know, if the answer is yes, then I'll promise it. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, U-turns saying we're going to do something and then not follow it through. So that's almost my heart on my sleeve, that's what I'm going to be doing, is following through with what I promise. That's a real rare thing in, in leaders these days, going into you know, a new wider role with more power, dare I say, it, if your ego looks at it that way, and, and immediately thinking what you can promise the employees and the business rather than you know, what you should expect from them. It, you know, is, is, is that a conscious thing or is, you know, is, is that just the way you feel... Uh, you know, you your business will will operate best if they've got that sort of leadership. Um, I, 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 it's just sort of inbred in me, really. It, it's not something that you know I have to force. Uh, I genuinely genuinely mean it when I promise a member of staff, whether that be a head of business or or, or, or parts delivery driver, something I will make sure I follow it through. 
and that will go to the top of my list. Uh, I'm a great believer business is not it's not difficult at all. It's all about the people. It's about giving them simple, clear instruction and processes. Uh, and then make sure you look after them, really. And then the rest looks after itself, almost. Um, yeah, I think I think that that came through from what I what I've kind of known of you over over the years and and back with the best dealerships to work for. And you you've you've always been about the team. It's it's fostering the team spirit, getting people working together, and having fun outside the business and in the business. And if with, with when times kind of get hard, like twenty twenty three is expected to be quite a hard year. Is it difficult as a leader to keep that fun in the business when when actually people have to work a bit harder and and um, the the costs are a bit tighter? Mm, no, not not really, not at all. Um, I don't want to give away all my secrets. <laughs> I've got quite a lot of things up my sleeve this year, but sometimes it's not about the value of something, uh, as in a, a monetary value. It's about the delivery of something. So. Uh, you know, for example, one of the most exciting things at Christmas time growing up uh, as a child uh, with my mother, who'd done a great job as a single parent, um, was getting that stocking off the end of my bed and tipping it out to get the, the satsuma out the bottom of it, you know? it. And I want to bring that excitement back to the business. Uh, and I'll deliver that in lots of small uh, widgets that, hopefully we'll, we'll start spreading around the group as a feel-good factor. Without changing the tone too much, Yeah, there is clearly growth as well planned. You've, you, I mean, you've, Tim mentioned that you started out running <coughs> the single-site care business. The Drayton side of the business has grown exponentially since then. Now you've added the Vauxhall part and Wilson & Co as well. Um, you know, I know you're developing new dealerships or your plans to develop new dealerships. Tell, tell us what the group's going to look like perhaps in 12 months' time and where you're headed. Okay, so <laughs> this year is all about uh, stability uh, and getting back to basics and making sure that the areas of weakness that we have, like all groups, uh, we strengthen and we cash in on the, the areas of strength uh, to carry us through tough times, challenging times. So that's pretty much 2023. It sounds fairly boring, but actually in between uh, those words is a hell of a lot of work uh, for me and my team to, to do. And obviously, you know, we want to deliver that result uh, for the greater group uh, uh, and for myself to almost stand in front of Robin in a year's time saying, you know, this is where we've come from. That's uh, Robin, Robin Wilson, the... He was yeah. the founder of the business, I guess. That's right, yeah. chief exec. Yeah. Um, where where does it what does it look like moving forward? Uh, we're going to grow. Uh, uh, there's conversations happening um, with current uh, partnerships and uh, bonded new ones. I can't say much more than that at the minute, uh, but it's also about looking at our current facilities uh, and saying, you know, does it need an update? If so, is the facility too big? You know, in some cases, is it too small? Um, and I'm looking at sweating certain assets on, on certain sites and saying, you know, this, this brand, you know, it's, it doesn't feed uh, the, the team we've got on this site it doesn't feed the size of the, the site and we need to look at perhaps in certain areas uh, without scaring the current partners I've got uh, I'm sure this will create some phone calls uh, but it's about sharing some of our facilities with other partners so that we can sweat that asset because ultimately we're running a, a commercial outlet you know uh, uh, it needs to be profitable I think a lot. Of, there's a lot more brands that are more open to multi-franchising and and kind of recognise that actually a stronger business that they're part of is is better than either well a loss-making business or having no representation at all. Absolutely, and it's about making sure in-house you have the uh, dedicated um, people on the brands. Um, I think where some multi-franchising goes wrong. Uh, is where it's pretty much headed up by one person and uh, 
the same team do all the brands. You need the experts, you need the geniuses on certain products, uh, and you need the individual managers driving uh, that business uh, to the marketplace and making sure that the targets are achieved for your your partners that you work with. And it sounds like you're already putting in things in place to get your team rallying behind you and, and make 2023 a success. Absolutely, let's hope so. Thanks, thanks ever so much for joining us, and 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 best of luck this year in the new role. It, you got a lot on your plate, but it sounds like it's in hand, isn't it? Thank yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll we'll catch up with you again in the future to see how it all all is going. Brilliant. Thanks, Tim. Cheers, Darren. Thanks, Darren. Cheers.